Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Four Wheels in a Seat, my channel where I review new cars every week for people who are looking for a new car and want a jargon-free, easy to understand review. To make sure you don't miss one though, please hit the subscribe button down below, the notification bell, and if you enjoy the video, give me a like too. Thank you. Today I'm in the 2024 Polestar 2, which is not terribly dissimilar to the Polestar 2 of 2022, which I reviewed two years ago. That's a lot of twos. If you want to check out that review, you can just click the link up there. But outwardly, the two cars do look quite similar. The only really noticeable difference being that the front grille is now completely blanked off rather than having a square pattern on the front. And the wheel design is a little bit different, but other than that, yeah, they're pretty much the same. What has changed a little bit though is the powertrain. In this long range version, we've got two electric motors that output 350 kilowatts of power and a bone crushing 740 Newton meters of torque. I think that might be a four wheels and a seat record. Zero to 100 in just 4.2 seconds. And on a full charge, you can go 568 kilometers, which is actually only 22 kilometers than the standard version. If you want some serious long range capability, better head for the long range single motor version. That will give you about an extra 100 Ks. Charging to 80% takes about 28 minutes. Interior design is pretty much the same across the range of Polestars, but here in this top spec model, we get a vegan weave tech material uh, on the dash here, along with some black ash wood inlays, which uh, have a really nice feel to them. The center console screen is the same across the range of all Polestar 2s, and it is really good. It looks like a big old iPad that's been kind of bolted on here, but it works really well. It's got a nice sharp picture. The software is very different to pretty much any other car you're gonna find. And it's also improved a lot since I last drove this car with the addition of Amazon Prime and YouTube. And the best part about having YouTube on this system is being able to watch your favorite car reviews while you're waiting for your car to charge. So you might be asking yourself, as I did, why is this car called Polestar 2? What and you can also use your Google login to sign in to the Google Store and download additional apps, which I'm sure probably include games and news apps. And uh, being an Apple fanboy, it actually pains me to say that unfortunately, Apple uses it just doesn't integrate as well as the Google software does. Apple CarPlay is not wireless. Uh, you will need a USB to plug in and it doesn't really sort of work that well with the uh, native systems here. So, you know, for once, I'm willing to give a tip of the hat to Android. Here in the top spec car, the sound system has 13 speakers and is powered by Harman Kardon. The downside to this system, of course, like a lot of cars, is that pretty much everything runs through the screen and you can't do things by touch. Now, I put the seat heating on in this car yesterday and now I can't actually work out how to easily turn it off. There's no button for it and I, I can't actually even see the climate controls here at a glance. Um, I'm sure it can't be that hard to do. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so I just had to swipe up to get to it. Underneath the screen, wireless charging for your phone, two USB-C ports. This lower console is really stripped back. There's only really uh, front and rear demister buttons here, plus volume control uh, for the sound system, hazard lights. Uh, I like the gear shifter here. It has a really nice feel to it. Very simple to use, a push button for park. This middle part of the console though, where the cup holders are, I, I don't really like this so much because Outwardly, there only seems to be one cup holder. The second cup holder is actually hidden here under the armrest, which means you haven't really got any storage space here that's handy. But there is a small amount of storage here just next to my knee and again, another one here on the passenger side not really the best solution in my opinion. This car doesn't have a head-up display and that's the same as it was before. I think that's just one thing that Polestar really should look at including in these cars. The digital instrument cluster though is brilliant. It's pretty much standard Volvo. There's two different display modes with full screen maps that are really sharp and it looks great. I really like this screen. Uh, very simple and easy to understand. The steering wheel, uh, again, very pared back. The um, 
functionality of some of the buttons isn't really immediately obvious, so there is a little bit of trial and error involved, but to turn on the adaptive cruise control is ridiculously easy. It is just one button push, and straight away the system has engaged. The default steering mode is a little bit light in my opinion, it's lacking any real feeling, so I've actually just gone into the settings and it's quite easy to make it firmer. So overall, the cabin layout, in terms of the controls, it's a lot closer to a traditional car than what, say, a Tesla Model 3 is. And I think that actually makes this car a little bit easier to live with. The seats are very comfortable. They're Nappa leather with full electric adjustment for the driver and front passenger plus lumbar support. They're heated and ventilated and curiously, unlike pretty much any other car I've come across, you can actually have heating and ventilation on at the same time, which just means you're filling yourself up full of hot air. I don't know if I really need any more of that. And the driving position in the cabin is really good. It feels sporty. There's plenty of headroom. Uh, I've got great visibility out the front. Rear vision mirrors are a little bit on the small side perhaps, but they are uh, made of frameless glass, which actually looks really cool. Same with the rear vision mirror. Not a lot of visibility out of the uh, rear window, but of course you've got reversing cameras to help you out with that, plus top-down 360 parking view. Oh, that's one thing that is slightly annoying. Whenever I put the car into reverse, it defaults to the top-down view rather than the reversing camera. You can switch it to the reversing camera, but it doesn't seem to want to stay that way, and that's just one little thing I'm finding a little bit annoying. Zero to 100 in this top spec dual motor long range Polestar 2 is 4.2 seconds. So let's just see what that's like. Oh my God. <laughs> that was like being on a roller coaster. Wow. <sighs> yeah, that doesn't get boring. And the power is always there. So if you need to overtake in a hurry, it's very easy to do. Safety gear includes all the standard stuff you'd expect, but here in this top spec model, we get post impact braking, uh, the aforementioned one touch adaptive cruise control and emergency stop assist. The Polestar Model 2 comes with a five year warranty and it is guaranteed to keep at least 70% of the charge in the battery after eight years. In terms of ride comfort, I can't fault this car. It is really comfortable. Suspension not too firm, not too soft. Dynamically, it's great around corners. The single motor versions of the Polestar 2 have now changed to rear wheel drive. Initially, they were front wheel drive, but now power goes to the rear. This particular car is all wheel drive, so it has fantastic grip in the wet and uh, if you should happen to head off on any unsealed roads. The Polestar 2 probably does ride up a little higher than most standard sedans. Um, it's not an SUV by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it is just a little bit higher than say, I don't know, my Honda Civic for example. So the noisiest thing about driving a Polestar 2 on a smooth freeway is probably the sound of the air conditioning or the ventilated seats if you've got them on because it is just so quiet. So look, I'm not gonna pull any punches. I really like this car. Since I last drove a Polestar, I think they've really narrowed the gap with Tesla, but a lot of people are still sort of thinking of the Model 3 when they think of EV. It's kind of the first thing they go to. But look, if you are thinking about getting a sedan and you wanna get something a little bit different that honestly is just as good as a Model 3, possibly even better, take a Polestar 2 for a test drive.